Jackie. I am a mom and a preschool teacher and this video is all about how to handle temper tantrums without resorting to any traditional punishments or rewards. So I want to start out by saying that temper tantrums are a very, very normal part of development and there are many traditional ways that you can choose to handle the temper tantrum from time out, ignoring, giving in, taking away privileges, and bribes. Unfortunately, these outdated techniques can cause a lot of unintentional mental health issues, including low self-esteem, anxiety, depression, and resorting to maladaptive coping mechanisms later in life. But fortunately, there is a better way, and that is my four-step process to handling misbehavior with your kids. And there's a link to that video below if you want to know more information. If you haven't already, you could also watch my video about the color spectrum of emotions and the brain state so you can better understand kind of what I'm talking about when I refer to the colors. So I'm going to say red, green, and yellow, and that is referring to the brain states that we all experience. So red is survival, yellow is emotional, and green is rational. And I do have links to those below as well if you want to check that out for more information. The terrible twos are really, really hard to handle. I teach two and three year olds and personally it's my favorite age. I think that the twos and threes are amazing. They're just starting to talk and become their own little people. It's for me, I have a hard time with like younger than that, like by the time they start walking but they're not quite talking yet. That's a really challenging age for me. But once they start talking, yes, a lot more temper tantrums, but also personality and they're talking and they're communicating. And I think it's awesome, but it's really hard to stay patient sometimes because the temper tantrums often seem like they're totally ridiculous and dramatic. It's hard. It's, it's challenging. And even for me, I've been working with kids for a long time. It's, it's hard for me too. And it's really difficult when you deal with meltdowns, fussiness, whininess, freaking out, and saying no to literally everything. It's so hard. All you did was just give them a blue crayon and now they're on the floor having a meltdown. It doesn't make a lot of sense and it can just be really hard to deal with that. Children's brains are developing really rapidly, especially from zero to two and from two up they're still developing really quickly and their their hormones just go crazy sometimes a temper tantrum happens when their brains get flooded with emotion too many things are happening at once and they have no idea how to handle it it's essentially a short circuit they can't process the situation they don't have the words for what they're feeling or the words for what they want and they don't know how to express themselves to get their needs met. They communicate their needs by being really dramatic to try to figure out how to express themselves in a way that they'll be heard. And usually the underlying reasons why a toddler has a temper tantrum are hunger and being tired. When they're really, really hungry or really tired, they really don't have the energy in their brains to be able to process the things that are happening. So they're really quick to get into that survival state. They just need to be safe again. And for them being really hungry, they don't feel safe because you know what it's like when you start to get hungry, your brain gets really foggy, your stomach starts hurting. Sometimes you get a little bit of a headache. And for, for a kid, they're totally dependent on you to feed them. They're going to let you know that. And sometimes they're going to let you know by having a temper tantrum because they don't yet know that, oh, I'm starting to feel hungry, I should eat. They don't know how to tell you that yet, so they're just gonna not tell you and expect that you just feed them on, on a schedule that works for them. And that, and that can be tricky. And in situations like that, there's really not a lot you can do to help with the temper tantrum other than just getting them food. Punishing a child during a temper tantrum when they don't have enough energy in their brains to be able to process like little things is going to make the situation a whole lot worse and isn't going to help them learn how to self-regulate. Any behavior is an indication of what brain state a child is in. And I mentioned this at the beginning of the video. Toddlers don't have the tools to de-escalate themselves. When they get into their survival state, they don't yet know how to get back into their rational state. And a lot of adults don't know how to do this either. So instead of trying to make your toddler stop having a temper tantrum, they literally can't stop. You could shift your intention to help them get through that surge of emotions that they're feeling and they don't really have a lot of control over. Be an anchor point so they can have something to grasp onto. During moments of calm, think about the last time your toddler had a temper tantrum. What led up to it? 
Were there signals your toddler gave that were telling you that they were starting to get into yellow? Were they rubbing their eyes? Were they yawning? Were they telling you that they were hungry? Um, are they starting to get sick? Did their schedule change? Toddlers really need a lot of consistency and a lot of predictability. And when things are not stable for a toddler, it makes them a lot more likely to get into red and to get into a temper tantrum. So how does this play out with the four steps to handling misbehavior? So here's a situation. You're in a grocery store and your child is having a total meltdown because you didn't hand them the lemon. I imagine something similar has happened to you if you have a toddler. And you see this all the time with parents in grocery stores and their kids are screaming and freaking out and you're like, just help that kid stop crying. I don't know about you, but I get so upset when I see kids crying in stores and the parents aren't doing anything about it. I'm like, the kid is screaming, help, help them. Um, and I think a lot of the reason that happens is because the parent doesn't know what to do. So here's how to handle the situation like that. When you're in a grocery store and your resources are limited and you just want your kid to stop screaming and freaking out. So the situation is, again, you're in the grocery store, you picked up a lemon and you put it in the cart and now your toddler's freaking out because they wanted to hold it. So what would you normally do? Tell them, oh, just be quiet. It's just a lemon. I'm not going to hand it to you. Would you give in and give them the lemon? Would you ignore them? I, wh how would you normally handle that? And here's how you could handle it differently. That will help de-escalate the situation and bring you and your toddler closer together instead of just being frustrated that they're freaking out over a lemon. So the four steps are identify, identify, validate, breathe, and problem solve. So identify, what emotion are they feeling? Sadness, disappointment, frustration, anger, give them a name for the emotion that they're feeling. So they're sitting in the cart, melting down because they're not, they're not holding the lemon. Literally pull the cart over, get down to their eye level and say, you look really sad or you look really angry or you look really frustrated. Whatever the feeling is that you think they're feeling, literally give them the word for it. And that will help bring them from that survival state back into yellow. And that's step one. Step two is validate. So validate is give them a, a, a reason why they're feeling what they're feeling. They're not crazy. They have a reason to be so upset. You really wanted to hold the lemon and I put it in the cart instead of giving it to you. And you felt really frustrated about that. And you felt disappointed because you really wanted to hold the lemon and see what it felt like. So say like you've wanted to do something, you've wanted to go and explore something that you're interested in and somebody else tells you no. Like that's hard to deal with. That's frustrating. That's you would be met with some disappointment. It really sucks when any curiosity is stifled. And that's exactly the feeling that your toddler's feeling, but at a much higher level. It's much more exaggerated because they don't know how to self-regulate yet. So now that you have identified what they're feeling and why, now it's time to breathe. So if they are having a hard time breathing, because sometimes when a kid is having a temper tantrum, it's similar to like if you have, if you've ever had a panic attack, you literally can't breathe. You can't take a breath. It's really hard. So in that case, just take some deep breaths for them. And humans have mirror neurons. So if you just took a breath while watching me take a breath, that's what's going to happen to your child. And we'll just help kind of reset them, help them recenter. And if they can take a breath, just encourage them to breathe with you. And I have a whole another video about deep breathing that I'm gonna be uploading in a couple weeks. After you have done some deep breathing, now it's time to problem solve. So how do you wanna handle the situation? What do you want your child to learn from all this? So in the situation with the lemon, do you want your child to learn that no means no? So if you're handling it traditionally, you could say, I, I said no, you're not getting the lemon and then you keep pushing the cart and usually that escalates and your child cries harder. So instead of escalating the situation and just doubling down on your no, the goal is still to say that no means no, we're not backing out, we're not giving in, no means no. So explain to them. How do you explain and how do you go about teaching a child that no means no? 
Well, you could say something like, you were really disappointed because I put the lemon in the cart and you really wanted to hold it. We're in a rush to get home and it's getting late. We only have one lemon and we're going to cook something fancy tonight and we need the lemon. I wanted to keep the lemon safe so I put it in the cart so it didn't fall on the floor. And I know that that was really frustrating because you really wanted to hold it and you wanted to give it a big hug. When we get home, would you like to help me put it on the counter? So that is saying no means no, you're not giving in and you're explaining why. It's not just a because I said so, it's I have a reason for why I said no and it's out of safety. Safety for the lemon in this case. And that will help them understand what's happening with the situation, why you said no, why they're feeling what they're feeling, and how to calm down and how to self-regulate and how to move past those big feelings of upset. And if you have tried everything and nothing has worked and they just keep crying and nothing is going to make them stop, then sometimes all you can do is just breathe so that you can stay calm and you can stay composed. Because just like a flight attendant tells you to put your oxygen mask on first before helping your child, you can't help an upset child calm down if you are not calm and stable yourself. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have. I wish you peace, love, health, and joy.